Hello, welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. I'm Danny Rocks. In today's lesson, I'm going to introduce you to pivot tables and specifically show you how to create a pivot table in Excel 2007. What is a pivot table and why should you take the time to learn how to create a pivot table? I like to say that a pivot table is a tool that helps me to get answers to my questions about my data. So I want to be able to ask questions about the data and use a pivot table to get these three answers. I want to be able to see the total sales for each division. We're using the ABC Grocery Company's first quarter results. There are four divisions, north, south, east, and west. I want to be able to answer that question and get the total sales for each division. My second question, I'd like to be able to compare the sales of the products across the divisions. Now, pivot tables are great because they enable us to see dimensions of our data. So I can see a cross tabulation of sales by product by division. And my third question, I'd like to be able to examine sales of individual product lines. So for example, I may want to compare the sales of produce and canned goods across divisions. So those are my three questions. Now let's begin to create our pivot table. First, we must begin with data that is in a well-structured table. A well-structured table has these three characteristics. Characteristic number one, we clearly identify the labels for our fields, the labels for our columns. The easiest way to do that is select the top row and apply bold formatting to it. The second characteristic is that we have no blank columns, no blank rows. When Excel spots the first blank column, the first blank row, it defines the limits of our data. The third is before we begin to create our pivot table, select the single cell in your data set. All right, now with the single cell selected, let's come up here to the Insert tab of the ribbon and in the Tables group, select Pivot Table. We're going to take the defaults. Our data is defined by the first blank row, the first blank column, and we want to create our pivot table in a new blank worksheet. Click OK. Here's the new blank worksheet. Here is the pivot table field list. So remember how we had identified that top row as the field labels? Here are the four field labels that we have, and here's the template for our pivot table. Now we can move this pivot table field list around. The first improvement in pivot tables in Excel 2007, it minimizes the amount of mouse dragging. In earlier versions, you had to do a lot of mouse dragging. And if you really weren't precise or really comfortable with your mouse, you got frustrated with pivot tables and you gave up too soon, I feel. So here, if I want to be able to select my division, I just click the division. It contains text, it contains labels. So by default, it gets placed in the row labels. So here are my four divisions in the row area. Now, if I wanted to move them over to the column, it's easy to do that without having to drag the mouse. Use the shortcut menu, and if I want to move it to the columns, I can. Want to move it back to the row? Just come back to the shortcut menu and say, move to the row label. Now, remember the first question, I wanted to be able to see the total sales for each division. So now that we have the divisions organized by row, let's see what the sales were. So when we click sales, it's a numeric field, and by default, it gets put into the values area of our pivot table, and the subtotal for summing it is the default subtotal. I can choose different subtotals. I could subtotal using average, or I could use it by using the highest value. So here we have the answer to our first question. What were the sales for the East Division? What were the sales for the South Division? Now, notice that the numbers are not formatted. In our original data set, we had currency with zero decimal places applied. Don't make this mistake with the pivot table. Remember how we moved the rows into the columns? So we're not formatting individual cells the way we would do in a normal Excel spreadsheet. You see, by moving it around, we're not formatting cells. We need to be able to format fields. And here's, here's how we do it. Just select a single numeric field, a single numeric cell, and then right mouse click, come down here and say Value Field Settings, and we want to select the Number Format tab. Then determine the type of number you want. So let's use currency, zero decimal places, and the dollar sign. Click OK, click OK, and now we've formatted the field. 
Now our second question that we wanted to answer was compare the sales of the products across the divisions. All right, that's easy to do. What we want to do is select product. Now before I select product, remember it's going to be put by default underneath the row. One of the other features that's really nice in Excel 2007 pivot tables is that we can actually filter the information before we drop it into the row. Now we'll filter a little bit later. So for right now, I'm not going to filter and I'm going to select the product and move it down in the row. So now we have an outer row, the division, and an inner row, which is the product. So it's a nice, neat, compact summary. It's a great way to answer our second question. What were the sales of meats in the East Division? Now, notice these uh, expand and collapse buttons over here. If you've ever used subtotals, you're familiar with how you can expand and collapse. Now, if I want to collapse all of the divisions, just right mouse click on any one of the expand collapse and come over here and say collapse the entire field. So here are the sales of the divisions with the products rolled up in there. Let's bring them back. So let's again right mouse click any one of those expand collapse and over here say expand the entire field. All right. Now also notice that this is a new look in, sub, uh, in, in pivot tables for Excel 2007. You notice in column A, I have a compact view. I have both the division and the beverages. So some people say, wait, what happened to this? So what we want to do is come up here and notice that when we're in a pivot table, we get two new tabs on the ribbon. So if I click outside the pivot table, those new tools go away. Click any cell, and I get pivot table tools for options for my pivot tables, pivot table tools for designing. So if you want to come back to the look that you had in earlier versions of pivot tables on the design tools for pivot tables, come over here into the report layout. Here's the new default view in Excel 2007, the compact form. If you want to come back into the outline form, now you have column A, column B. So it's your choice. For right now, I'm going to keep it back here in the compact form. All right, now remember our third question. I want to be able to examine sales of individual product lines. Several ways to do this. One way is to move the product from the row area into the report filter. Now, in earlier versions of Excel, in a pivot table, we had the page. So the page area no longer exists. Now it's called the report filter. So let's move the product from the row, and we want to move it up here into the report filter. So now we have our summary for all the sales down here. If I want to be able to see sales, let's say, for canned goods only, now here's the sales for canned goods. One other great improvement in Excel 2007 is that now in the page area or in the report filter, we can see the uh, pivot table summaries for multiple fields. So let's just say that I want to be able to see the combined sales filtered for fish, meat, and poultry. So you, I can select multiple fields to filter in the report filter. That's a new feature in Excel 2007. So there is the summary for those three fields that I have selected. So it's a great dynamic way. When I want to see the sales for all, I click it back again. All right, finally, before we leave pivot tables, you cannot let me repeat this, you cannot harm the data. If I try to change a number, I can't do that. So let's just move our product back here. So I cannot change an individual number. If I try to type in there 500,000, you see I can't change it. I can only change the data back in the original data set. And let's change this to a million. Now notice that the number of our total sales doesn't change until we come up here and on our pivot table tools in the options when we refresh the data. Let's see the difference. Before I click, our total sales were 9 million. Now when I click to refresh the data, now it will update with the information. So now we have that new revised total. So there you've seen how to create pivot tables in Excel 2007 to be able to get answers to the questions you have about your data set. And I'll see you in the next lesson.